Okay, so we have our crankshaft out of our 2.2 liter 911E engine, and we've already had this crack tested. We sent it out uh, quite some time ago and ran it through that. We know it's clean for a crack test. The journals are actually in not bad shape. Uh, we're just gonna do a polish on this, but first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my distributor drive gear and my intermediate shaft drive gear off, just mainly so we can clean and uh, get everything prepped for going to Together. We've got a couple of marks here on our distributor gear where it looks like somewhere in the process something's hit it. So I want to take my file and just file finish those so they don't give us any issues. We might actually have to put a new gear on. That's a pretty good chunk on that one there. So first to get this off, I'm going to take my circlet pliers and this is going to be a fairly tight fit. There's our circlip off. Uh, there are different size circlips, so we're going to keep this with this. Now, with that off, to remove these gears, I'm going to use my same two-legged puller that I used on my intermediate shaft, and I'm just going to pull these gears off the nose of the crank. Okay. distributor drive gear. On early motors it doesn't matter which direction it goes on, either like that or like that. With exception, once you get to the 3.2 liter Carrera engines, there's going to be a Porsche parts emblem and that does need to face out front. That's very important, otherwise you have problems with distributor indexing. This is our zero gear, Mark Zero, which matches our zero gear on our intermediate shaft. Other than it's pretty scungy, we're just gonna clean everything up. And then with our crank, uh, it's already been washed, just gonna clean the front section here. I'll go set it up in our lathe and get ready to polish it. So I've just cleaned up the drive gear off our crank and I'm just gonna inspect it for wear. So far it looks really nice. No signs of wear on the teeth on either face and it shouldn't give us any problems with our new intermediate shaft gear. Uh, this piece is just a spacer, so the way that this gear installs onto the crank, the chamfered side always goes against the uh, web right here. So this installs like so, and then our spacer will go on and followed by our distributor drive gear. So I'm just gonna give these a light oil so they don't corrode at all uh, while we're working on our crankshaft. And this piece here, we have decided just to go ahead and replace it. I could take a small file and dress that damage, but I don't want to run the risk of it creating a hiccup because the only way to change this is to completely disassemble the engine. So for a cheap part, it's be ridiculous to reuse. Okay, so now we've got our crank with our gears strapped off. Uh, I've just cleaned this with a little bit of uh, brake clean. I'm going to go set it up in my lathe and we'll go over, we'll measure each of the journals again just to make sure that we've got room to polish. Uh, when you do polish it does take off a very small amount of material so if you're really close to going undersize then it's not something that can be done. Uh, if we've got enough room, which I believe the last time I looked at this uh, there was going to be enough room, but we'll get it in the lathe. Okay, so we've got our crank mounted in our lathe uh, very carefully on my number eight bearing to rotate. This is going to go very slow and no load. Uh, what I want to do next is I just want to go over and measure all of my journals and make sure I have enough material to be able to safely polish. So on the early cranks, the rods and mains are the same dimension. The spec, this is a standard crank, is new spec is 56.990 to 56. 0.971, so that's the newly machined tolerance with a wear limit of 56.960. Anything below 960 means it needs the crank to be ground to the next undersize. So I'm just starting out, I've set my uh, mic at 
56.990 and I'm just going to run over see how it feels on each one. Same thing whenever you're measuring a cylinder it's better to set your mic and use it like a feeler gauge and so far everything feels pretty nice. That one feels a little on the loose side and what I'll typically do is run over the crank and then drop it down a little. That one feels right on size. Feels right on size. Okay, I'm just going to drop it down to 980. Yeah, that's definitely tight. Definitely tight. Yes, I could force it over, but that's not the purpose of this. Definitely tight. Tight. So this one, I mean, all of the journals feel good. It's all on the upper end. Yeah, it's stuck on there already. Perfect. So we're all on the upper side of the of the new machine tolerances. Nowhere near. Uh, well, figuratively speaking, the worn out tolerance. So we're set up to go ahead and polish. So this is our crank polishing machine, and this is basically a belt driven thumb drive. And we are gonna be rotating our crankshaft at about 40 RPMs a minute, so nice and slow. And I'm just gonna work each journal just very quickly and lightly. We don't wanna take a lot of material off, we just wanna polish the surface. Here's our finished product. Just going to take my mic. Good, still tight. Still tight. on that one. Still tight. No. Not even close to the wear limit. Nine seven seven. Okay. So that's it for a polish. Next step is into the parts washer, scrub it all clean. We want to make sure all of our oil passageways are clear. Uh, we don't want to have any debris from our polisher stuck in an oil galley. 
and once everything is cleaned we're ready to press our gears back onto the front. out of the parts washer I've done a quick air dry on it it's going to use some brake clean and I want to go through our journals just making sure that we've got fluid flow and I can see I got fluid coming out here see it's coming out of my connection here coming out of my crank over here. So we got two holes on each one of these journals. So what I'm taking my finger and just holding it on the bottom side, otherwise it'll just squirt straight out that bottom one. Yep. Do it a final wash down and then I'll hit it one last time with compressed air. Alright, so now we've got our crank all cleaned, we're polished. I've got my gear sitting on my uh, vise here waiting to be heated. I'm just going to heat the gear, slide it down onto it. If it doesn't go all the way down on the first shot, not a big deal. Uh, we can either put it in the press or lightly tap it down with a brass drift. Nice. And once again, you got to remember the flange faces down. And we're just going to let that relax and shrink onto the crank. All right, so now my gear's cooled down to the touch. Going to put my spacer on. Come on. Might want to give it a little bit of heat. Spacer drops on. And then we have our new distributor drive gear, so we're going to heat that up as well and drop it on. Not hot enough yet. Okay, I want to take my circlip. Make sure it's a nice firm fit, which it is, feels good. Want to make sure my circlip is seated all the way around. Okay, there's our crank ready to go back into our case. the nose.
Nice, feels good.